Hello! In this video I will give a quick overview of the new features that I find interesting of the Rickpost node in Houdini 19. And the first feature that I find very useful is the Rick Visualizer. And in Houdini 18.5, if you had a digital asset with multiple Rickpost nodes and used Kinefx Rickpost default state, then we get this selection for all the rig post nodes. So when I select the joint, it shows point one from the first rig post nodes and any one from the second rig post node. So the workaround for this, because for instance, uh, I only want to animate this rig post animate, and this one rig post pose was just used to pose the skeleton, for instance. So what I did in Houdini 18.5 was I modified a rig pose viewer state. So basically I created a custom rig pose state uh, which returned only specific rig pose nodes. So I modified the get pose nodes function in order to limit which rig pose nodes were displayed and then used that viewer state instead of the kinefx uh, rig pose state. So not a very elegant solution to simply decide which rig pose nodes the viewer state is working on. And now in Houdini 19, what we can do is simply add a configuration in the settings of the rig visualizer and set which joints we wish to configure. And under join display, just deselect everything in order to hide all the joints. So now if I go into the rig post state, there's only the join display for the second rig pose. So this is a very useful feature as it doesn't require any additional rig post states and it's very easy to use. So in addition to using the rig visualizer this way inside the rig pose, there's also another node, configure rig visualizer. So this one can be useful, for instance, I'm gonna just clear this one here. And let's say there are multiple rig pose nodes here. So by default, this would mean that we would get multiple selections for which rig pose. And if we here just add all the joints and just hide them here, and then create another rig visualizer before the rig pose that we wish to work on and we can see we get the same effect so we can use configure uh, rig visualizer to work on multiple rig poses so two different options and a very useful feature so that is for the visualizer now let's move on to the motion path so the motion path feature is really nice to have inside the rig pose. So by simply enabling it, we see the motion path for the current control or animated joint. It's easy to edit in the viewport, the whole motion. And there are a few additional options that, that makes it easier to work with. So apart from changing the color and the display here, one useful feature can be velocity. It shows in color which parts are faster and which are slower. We have the acceleration and the limit number of frames. This one I find very useful, especially when the motion path starts overlapping. So limiting the number of frames uh, can be really useful to only focus on specific parts of the motion path. One useful feature is also disabling this jump to keyframe uh, as it allows to edit the path without jumping to this specific frame. So if it's enabled, it will always jump in the timeline to that specific frame. But if you disable it, we can just edit the whole path without changing the time. And then show frame ticks and uh, how they are displayed also. It can display the tangent handles, so it allows to modify 
the tangents of each specific keyframe here in the viewport. So a very useful animation feature. And the next one is baking. And baking is pretty straightforward with one little important detail. And that is it will bake the input animation rather than this rig pose animation. So here, this is the animation coming from this rig pose too. So figure eight animation. Now, if we add additional animation here, and let's add a keyframe here. So let's move it just up here. So the whole animation is happening higher. So when we bake this, the animation that we added was ignored because it only takes the input animation. So this is just something to keep in mind when baking uh, the rig pose nodes. And there are other options. For instance, we can just bake the current pose. We have different transform options. And we also have bake from option, which allows to bake from a different node. And one thing to keep in mind when using the bake from is that the skeleton topology between that node and the repose node should match. The next one I would like to talk about is the speed improvement in the rig pose node in Houdini 19. Overall, the rig pose node seems to be much faster. And I will show an example here. So this is a variable rig, uh, which has multiple rig pose nodes inside. And if I show first the Houdini 18.5 version, so in Houdini 18.5, this rig's performance is fine until it has a large number of controls. So as we can see here, the performance with five controls is very good. But if I increase the number of controls to, let's say, 20, and let me just first reset these parameters. So you can see that the performance is starting to really drop. So once we get to a large number of controls in this type of setup, the performance drops dramatically. So that is Houdini 18.5. And then if I test this in Houdini 19, and first let's change the number of controls to 20. we see that the performance is much better than in 18.5. And there's also a new multi-threading option. And according to help files, it offers a speed increase in rigs with a large number of joints, but otherwise it should be turned off as single threading should be faster. And for my initial testing, I didn't notice much difference uh, because uh, I, I have tested only in the 100, 200 range and uh, both performances were extremely good. So for instance, if I change the number of controls to a really large number here, so let's say 200. And there are multiple rig pose nodes inside this asset. So with 200 controls, there's quite a lot of calculation going on. And if I rotate this control and first I have to change the fall off value for this control because the density is so high. So we see the performance is still very fine. And if we change the multi-threading and enable it, there isn't much, much difference. So here we get sort of 18 frames per second. And if we disable it, it's very similar performance, at least it feels that way. So I guess this is really an option as it explained in the health files for very, very complex rigs with thousands of joints. Otherwise it shouldn't 
make much difference and actually single trading should be faster. So that was a quick overview of the new features of the Rick Post note in Houdini 19. And I hope you found this video useful and see you next time.